Hello. So, yeah. So, hey, well, welcome back. Um, I was asked by a couple people a couple questions to cover a top, couple topics, and I and I, I'll take a short video to do that today. Um, you know, so I'm wearing a sweatshirt. I don't care if it says it. <laughs> the media says it's hot every place in Michigan. It's cold. Uh, so it's a little chilly this morning. So I have to layer up. But anyway, so Jose asked uh, what my thoughts about the Christian community for religious renewal, which is a kind of a church movement that arose out of anthroposophy when some Lutheran pastors went to Rudolf Steiner in the 1920s and said, what can you do for us? You know, we need we need a renewal in, in Christianity and in, in the practice of religion. And so he came up with some suggestions for them. Uh, and you would think that a guy who spent years as a Waldorf teacher and a lot of my friends ran anthroposophists and just back actually bumped into one of my old colleagues yesterday were, <laughs> when I say old colleagues, because we're old, but I love her to death. I was so happy to see her, but I hadn't, I hadn't seen her for a few years. Um, but anyway, uh, quite a few of my friends participate in the Christian community. Uh, the godmother of one of my, my sons does. Uh, but I've never been to a, set, a service. I've never been to a service of the Christian community for whatever reason. I mean, I'd like to, but it just never came up, you know, never had the opportunity. I was doing other stuff. I was going to church. Uh, and But I did, and this is uh, important. So when I was a Waldorf teacher, uh, the house next door to the school was was owned by the school and was rented out to a Christian community priest and his family. And when my wife was pregnant with our first son, the teachers had a, a baby shower for us and they did it at that house. And the, the, the man who was the priest there, his name was Hartman Young Guy, I swear he was one of the I mean, truly, one of the holiest people I've ever met. What, such a good man. Uh, I have nothing but great things to say about him. And I actually, uh, if you know anything about the history of world of education, you know the first school in Stuttgart, they had uh, what they were called free religion lessons. And nobody ever does them. So I, so I talked the, the faculty into doing an experiment with having a once a week like a free religion lesson and it was aimed at younger children, uh, you know, it's like first or second grade. And Reverend Younga taught the class. It was just beautiful. My my old, second oldest son was in the class, but it was not very many kids attended. So I think they discontinued. I was I was happy that they were able to do that. But no, no kidding. He was a very holy man. Uh, in fact, at that baby shower, he gave my wife this beautiful card. And she, she kept it, and he wrote in it the first stanza to Thomas Traherne's poem, Wonder. If you know, it, it's the one, it's, it's probably the most anthologized poem. It starts off, uh, how like an angel came I down, how bright are all things here, when first among his works I did appear. Uh, and she kept that as, as a treasure for, her, uh, for, for all these years. Um but my one experience in the Christian community church was a beautiful one. A friend of ours, her name was Janet McGavin. And she was, so I was 29 or 30 and she had to be in her 80s. And she died not long after I met her, a couple of years. And they held the body in wake at the Christian community church, which is not, which is not too far from where I lived. And, uh, at that time, I used to uh, carpool with my friend Bart to school, and he said, "Let's let's go to the church early and see Janet." So we did, and the beautiful thing that they were doing was uh, it's like a vigil, right, where people were were re reading in order, you know, from 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 uh, beginning to end the Gospel of Saint John over the body. And actually, to, to the spirit of, of 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 Janet, 
And it was a beautiful, beautiful practice. I mean, I'd never seen anything like that. And uh, so even when my both my parents died, I, I read them in the Gospel of St. John. Um, so yeah, so that's my experience with the Christian community. I'm sorry, there's not much more to it. Uh, but let's get to house church. Now, I wrote not too, I mean, I've written quite a bit about house church in my Substack. If you don't, it's the Druid Stairs Back. And uh, it was not something I ever wanted to do or planned on doing, but I felt compelled by necessity to do it. Uh, and this happened, well, I think, not when I think about it, I think it, it took stages. I think the first stage toward that was was it 2018 when the McCarrick scandal broke that Cardinal McCarrick had been grooming seminarians for sex and it was just horrible to hear that I mean just made me want to throw up and at that time when it broke my book Transfiguration and the subtitle of which is uh, The Radical Catholic Reimagination of Everything was in production so it was getting close to being done but it, i'm not kidding i was i was going to call my publisher and say let's let me change the subtitle because i don't want to i don't want to have catholic in the title i'm ashamed of being catholic at this point you know because you know because i got to the point where this is just never going to change it's never going to change this 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 corruption this sexual um deviancy you know, in this, uh, so anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to sexy man just to think about it. Sorry. Uh, so anyway, I think that was the seed of it, but it's still, I was, we were still, you know, regular Byzantine Catholic church attending people. I was practically a deacon. In fact, um, I wasn't, I was never ordained a subdeacon or anything, but when the, the priest would introduce me to, to the congregations, he would, you know, it's like at a funeral or something. This is, he would call me the deacon. And uh, because I would do, you know, just about everything a deacon does. I would not like a deacon, would, but I was, I was doing a lot, uh, including uh, distributing holy, the Holy Eucharist. Um, because the, our priest was really frail and old and he could barely stand and he needed help. And that, that's why I, we, we continued going there long after we should have, because we moved, but he was so sick and I could not leave him. You know? So, and so anyway, so, but the, the Cardinal McCarrick scandal happened and you know, I started to have serious concerns. Um, but then uh, when COVID happened, you know, in the, in the various shutdowns, that, you know, I had to think of what to do, you know, because first of all, uh, that was, so it came down in March of 2020. And then Easter, of course, was the next month, I think it was, I think it was in April. And Easter was canceled across the board, across all denominations. Uh, clo churches were closed and, which was tragic. I mean, tragic. Easter is the, the feast of feasts, and it's always been my favorite holiday of the church year. Um, so yeah, so that so that that I found that disturbing. But then, you know, I also at the time my two youngest kids are now how old are they? Twelve and fourteen. So they at the time they were was it nine and eleven. At that 9-11. Um, and it's, you know, so they still needed, I mean, of course, you know, I, everybody does, but I felt especially obligated to them and to my two daughters who were still at home. Um, they were a little older high school kids that they all, they needed some kind of regular spiritual formation. I mean, other than just, you know, the kind of stuff we do at home. So, at first, we started to do um, just uh, the noonday service from the, the Book of Common Prayer. Um, reason for many reasons. One reason is it's pretty simple. Secondly, 
uh, I think I love the language of the Book of Common Prayer, just like I love the language of Shakespeare and the King James Bible. And, and plus, having a doctorate in early modern English literature and in, 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 in the metaphysical poets in particular. <laughs> I, you know, I, still, I was friends of mine who were Episcopal or Anglican priests. I still, I'm kind of like 47% Anglican <laughs> because of that, you know. So there's a lot of that in my, in my, my soul. So we would do that, and but then Christmas was canceled. You know, the, getting to be a bit much, and then, and then East. I can't remember if the second year the Easter was canceled or there were restrictions on it. I can't remember how that went, but I was at that point. I was like, "This is crazy. I can't keep doing this." And I told my wife, "Well, we're just going to do house church. We'll do the Eucharist, and and I don't care." <laughs> You know, which is hard for me to do. I mean, it was a, not an easy thing for me to do, uh, but I did, we did it. And uh, at first I did it kind of on the sly because um, my son, which one was it? Probably Daniel, was in third grade that year. And part of the third grade curriculum in Waldorf School, which is what we follow in our homeschool uh, I like, uh, curriculum, the third grade is the Old Testament stories. And of course, you know, central to that is the story of the Passover. So we, we did a Seder. And just like Jesus and the apostles did a Seder at the, at the Last Supper, right? And I told my wife, I said, he said it's not going to just going to get you know, a, a Seder anymore today. And so that was our first uh, foray into the Eucharist, which I'm, I'm sure will outrage a lot of people who, who see this, but you know, what are you going to do? I just don't care anymore. Uh, and so we started to do more and more house church. And, and so what we do, I mean, we don't, it's not very fancy. It's, I mean, I certainly don't consider myself a priest. Um, but what, what we do, we take uh, songs often from the Anglican hymnal because they're all singable tunes and they're actually very close to folk music. And if you, in fact, if you know, I've, I've shared on my Substack and other places, my blog, uh, there's a group from Utah called the Lower Lights and they do a beautiful version of uh, All Creatures of Our God and King, which is a very, it's like a folk music version. And I love stuff like that. And plus, you know, my wife and I both play, you know, kind of a folk, folksy guitar and everybody sings in my family. My kids are musical. So we started doing some of those songs when we do uh, that. We do uh, Jerusalem, the hymn by Hubert Perry with the lyrics of William Blake. We also do Morning is Broken with a uh, Cat Stevens version with lyrics but and it's in it's in the Anglican hymnal I'm just going to tell you uh with lyrics by the immortal Eleanor Fargin whom I love to death and I wrote a chapter on her in my book uh Sophia in Exile cuz she's just underappreciated as a poet and writer I mean she's kind of just she she gets to sit at the ki kids table cuz she she wrote what are ostensibly children's books uh so serious scholars don't take her seriously, but I do. And especially if you read her poetry, oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. Especially uh, the book Trees. I think if you want to check her out, that would be a good one, good place to go. So what we do is we have those songs. And I don't know what we got here. We, we have, we, we do some, we do start with a song. We do part of the we start with part of the, the the noonday service from the book of common prayer we just to start us off and sometimes we'll do the psalms and we'll chant the psalms or read the psalms you know verse by verse we'll, i'll read one everybody else will read one I'll do uh like you see often in byzantine church, catholic churches or orthodox churches we, but often we'll substitute the Psalms with prayers or, or litanies from, I don't know where it is, I have it here a minute ago. Uh, anyway, I've written about this before. It's uh, the two things that I rely on quite a bit are the Celtic spirituality book that was put out by Paulus Press, 
which is just wonderful because it's got all this these great uh, Welsh and Irish uh, litanies and prayers and just wonderful. I mean, we in fact, the St. Patrick's Day, we do the deer's cry, for instance. Um, got a lot of great stuff, but also that, you know, kind of famous collection that was put together in the late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, the Carmina de Pedelica that was uh, collected by uh, Alexander Carmichael. Uh, that's got a lot of, it's got a lot of stuff that has nothing to do with, well, it's only marginally to do with, with religion, you know, a lot of, has, has chant, uh, charms and spells. Like my, my favorite is the charm of the, of the, of the churn, but it's got, but it's, it, but it draws on folk traditions from mostly Scotland and there, the prayers are likewise beautiful in there. So we'll, we'll throw some of those in there and what, what, and, and now this is the thing with, with, with house church, we, we try to cultivate in our house church uh, practice a Sophianic sensibility. So, what and that's what's great about the Celtic stuff in, is it often they'll, they'll mention uh, the, you know the elements, the planets, the, you know the trees, the rivers, all, you know, the animals. So all these things were pretty brought into it. And it, oh, it's, it's so gorgeous. In fact, I don't know where the book is. I want to read you one, but I do not know where the book went to. It was here. It was here a little while ago. Oh, I found it. Hold on. You might, you might hear something collapse. It's at the bottom of a pile. There. So here it is. There's Celtic spirituality, Paulus Press. Uh, what's it? What's the, I can't remember the uh, editor's name. It's Oliver Davies, of course, who did it, with the help of Thomas Laughlin. So let me just read you one of my one of the things we would do here. So, like here, here's the litany of cre creation. It's a, a Welsh devotional text. I beseech you by the tenth order on the compactor, I beseech praiseworthy Michael to help you against demons. Together with Michael, I beseech you by land and by sea unceasingly, I beseech you respectfully by every quality of God the Father. I beseech you, O Lord, by the suffering of your body, white with fasting. I beseech you by the contemplative life. I beseech you by the active life. I beseech the people of heaven with Michael for my soul. I beseech the saints of the world to help me on earth. I beseech the people of heaven with bright arm, Michael. I beseech you by the triad of wind, sun, and moon. I beseech you by water and the cruel air. I beseech you by fire. I beseech you by earth. I be beseech you by the threesome of the vaulted fiery and fiery zone. I beseech you by the two temperate zones. I beseech you by the two frozen zones. I beseech you by the compass of the harmonious firmament. I beseech every order dignified in its divisions, the host of the bright stars. And it, and it goes on. I won't read the whole thing. It's long. Um, so that's what we try to cultivate in our house church. Um, because, in, you know, from a sociological perspective, the idea is, you know, that that falsehood that the earth is not our real home is is no place there. I was disappointed to see recently um, a post by somebody I respect on, on a Twitter or X that um, it was on the Feast of the Assumption of Mary that, you know, we celebrate her going home here. And I, and I have some serious problems with that. She was already home, right? Um, in fact, if you read the book of Revelation, it, it was a new, new heaven and new earth. So it's the redemption of this earth is more is is what's important, and I think when Christians uh, try you know try to try to say this isn't our real home, that there's, I think that's the the source of all kinds of problems, all kinds of problems. It's it's the the pure nature, it's the pure nature uh, version of our relationship to the earth. In which which is horrid and it's heresy as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, going back to house church. So we do that. Um, we try to make it as 
folksy and home home like as possible. Um, we do the Eucharist, and uh, so but this year actually, so I plant a few years ago. I planted some wine grapes, and this year I probably have enough to make a little bit of wine. Probably make a couple of gallons, maybe. If I'm lucky, get two gallons. And we'll, we'll, I'll make that into wine, and we'll use that only for church. We won't, won't be for recreational use at all. That's why I make mead for. But so yeah, so we'll do that, and we try to, you know, mark the festivals as much as we can. Um, on St. Bridget's Day, for instance, we we have a little. I wouldn't even call it an altar. It's a little table with a with a cross, the Celtic cross, and. No, I'll say it on there. It's a deer's horn. It has a, an icon of the Virgin, and it's probably got some other stuff on there. And so, so this is part of this is a part of our our own aesthetic approach to this. And and I would su say suggest. I mean, I'm sure. However, people do home church. Um, you know, it, it it's got to be organic, right, and come out of the the, the people celebrating. And it's interesting. So when I started doing this and people, some of my friends got wind of it. And of course, most of my friends are, you know, I should, you know, most of my friends on social media, I should say, are either, you know, church going Orthodox or Catholics or Anglicans, Episcopalians. And a friend of mine who's a Episcopalian seminarian, actually he was Catholic, but he left the church because of the McCarrick thing. And he liked McCarrick, but he was felt so betrayed. He he texted me after I, he saw that what I was doing. He said, "So you're part of the independent sacramental movement?" I'm like, um, "I don't know what's that. <laughs> I had no idea what it was. I didn't know it was a movement." And people have reached out to me. In fact, just recently, uh, somebody read my my uh, Substack when I was talking. It's uh, the one I called Alt Christianity. That and he reached out and. You know, shared some resources with me because apparently he's doing uh, house church, which is encouraging. And I've heard from other people as well who are doing their own thing. And my wife has heard from people. And now, now here's the thing though. Um, I mean, this is the, the, the challenge, right? And it's the challenge in any worship setting. How do you um, make it new? And I don't mean just do new stuff for the sake of doing new stuff. How do you behold, I make th all things new? Because we know you can get into habit and you just be, you know, just doing the thing. It's like people go to church, you know, and you're just going through the motions. And, and, and sometimes my mom, my wife in particular, we know she likes doing house church, but she misses seeing people like you would at, at, a, at a normal church, right? And, so, and we do like to have people join us. We don't have people join us as much as we'd like, but, but we do have people join us upon occasion because it's nice, you know, to celebrate with people, to be where, where two, or, two or more are gathered in my name. There is Christ in the midst of them, right? Um, so it's nice. And, and it's interesting, um, probably in the back of our minds, both my wife, Bonnie, and myself, when we're doing this, was... Uh, the community at Little Gidding, if you're familiar with it, Nicholas Farrar, who was the literary executor of George Herbert, the metaphysical poet, and Nicholas Farrar was a deacon in the Anglican Church in the 17th century. And he had this, in fact, you can still visit it, this little church where he and his family, and I, not just his immediate family, but I think some siblings, his brother, a couple other, his sister, had this beautiful little community and was, and in fact, they were uh, ridiculed and dismissed in a pamphlet as the Arminian nunnery, right? Because at the time it's, it smacked too much of papist behavior. It was like, we, we thought we got rid of monasteries with the, with the reformation, but no, Nicholas Ferrer went back into it and he would, and it was a nice community, but they had, I think it was his brother, his wife, who was kind of a problem child and she was, a non-conformist and she didn't like what was going on but she had to put up with it right so yeah there's there's always that i suppose that you're with you're doing things in a human community 
and people are gonna people are gonna human you know what i'm saying <laughs> when when you're human just do some human then so but it's but in general though i mean it's it's been a, a pleasant experience i mean uh a lot falls on me i guess and you know i got to you know, especially I'm trying to, you know, the, the, the challenge for me is getting more songs because I don't want to just sing the same. I think we have, well, it changes over, you know, when you get to Easter and Christmas, there are some other songs we can bring in. Like one of my favorites at Easter, for instance, is uh, Now the Green Blade Riseth, one of my favorites. And then in the Christmas, one of my favorites is In the Bleak Midwinter, the beautiful song. Uh, which is from lyrics of uh, Christina Rossetti. So yeah, it's, so I, I mean, it's, it's all it's all good, but you know, it's, <laughs> I always want to get more songs, and I'm always trying to can find some more. But that, that I just recently lit. Now thank we all our God is one I learned. In the, there's actually a, I can't remember her name. There's a nice uh, there's a woman who does a lot of folk music renditions of kind of those traditional hymns you can find on YouTube. It's very wonderful. Um, so that's what we do and we did it first out of duress I mean and then even when the churches opened up again and here's the thing I just didn't feel I could go back because I felt um, in my tradition the Catholic tradition I felt that the Pope and bishops had all been complicit in in crimes in, in you know in you know when the Pope Francis said it was an act of love to get the vaccination, you know, that was untested. And, and you know, I so was kind of, I just felt that was unconscionable. And, and I, and not that and other things, and, and the McCarrick thing, I just can't go back, you know. And it, you know, it's heartbreaking to me, you know. I put, I put in a lot of years, I got some seniority, but uh, I just can't do it. So, so I, so what I would like to do, so I would like to encourage all of you who, you know, if you're interested in house church, and I'm no expert, I'm just doing what we do, I'm just kind of making it up. Uh, but share us your own interest, share your own interest in the comments and also share whether it's resources or maybe share what you do in your own house church situation. So I, I'm interested in it. In fact, I was thinking about, I don't know if I'll have time to do it this fall, but I was thinking about doing like a house house church conference here at my farm. And, and let me know if you're interested in that too, because I would like to do it. I don't think I'll do it this fall, maybe in the spring. Uh, because I just, I want to know what people are doing. And, you know, I'd like, <laughs> I'm technically out here in the wilderness. We live in, in the middle of the wilderness pretty much. Um, but it's also there spiritually, right? In fact, yeah, being out in the wilderness, it's my, kind of one of my patron saints is John the Baptist. You know, I think he's he, in the out wilderness. He called Christ in the way from the future, from the wilderness. You know, so it's kind of an, uh, a theme for us. But anyway, yeah, let me know what you think, and because uh, you know, I, th I think, and I'm still finding my way through this as well. You know. Still an uncharted territory to some degree, but I but I certainly have found it very spiritually nourishing to do this. I mean, I, and I also felt you know there was there was there was a healing to it because of um, various various things um, you know that happen in our church experience over the years, and you know especially when. Politics. I don't mean Democrat versus Republican politics, but just you know, you you really see the the nastiness of ecclesiality, you know, and it's not pleasant, and it's not it's not just a problem of Catholic churches, right? It's every place. So anyway, just to make to make a short story long, <laughs> let me know what you think, and we'll continue this. And if you have other other suggestions for topics, please, as I said before, you know. Feel free to drop them. And somebody wanted to me to wonder if I could do something on Lorca as far as poetry goes. And I, I like Lorca, and I, but I don't think I know Lorca as well 
as I could to do that. But but there are some of the other topics I will be taking up, like reincarnation. I think we'll do that one. I also want to get to Robert Herrick. I keep talking about that. And some other poets to talk about. So, so let me know what you think. Let, let me know what you're interested in. And God bless, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you.